take out your 10 chart or your 15 chart or your 20 chart. The 10 chart was developed by educational psychologists. So I thought I would love to teach this uh, different strategy to my children because it gives them a visual way of adding and subtracting of bonds. I want you to please put three blocks onto your 10 chart. How many blocks do I still need to get to five? You tell me. Two. If I have five blocks on my 10 charts, tell me, how many blocks do I still need to get to five? Zero. Why do you say that? Because there's no more blocks open. I use this 10 chart because it's not only a visual way, but it's also a kinesthetic way of learning. You have different kinds of learners in your class. You've got the auditory learners that learns better when you speak and they listen. You get the visual learner where they would like to see visual things such as pictures or blocks or something like that. And then you also get the children that is more kinest kinesthetic. You can give me two numbers, two different numbers, that makes up the number seven. Um, five plus two. Why do you say five plus two? Because it equals seven. As you progress to larger numbers, you can also incorporate plus and minus. You've got seven blocks on your ten charts. Okay. If I take four away, how many blocks do I still have? Three. Three, very good. Later on when the learner is more confident in math, you can take the 10 chart away and they can visualize without this chart. I want to see if you can remember what we've just done. Quickly close your eyes. Visualize that 10 chart. Five blocks at the top, five blocks at the bottom. Now I'll say, put four blocks on your 10 chart. How many do I still need to get to 10? Oh, yes, six. All the activities are differentiated. That means that the children that's not strong in math gets easier questions. And the children that's very strong in math gets a 20 chart instead of a 10 chart. So that would just be two groups of 10. I like using the 10 chart because it shows learners that numbers can be grouped together into tens and in units. We now move on to spontaneous learning where we divide the children up in different ability groups. The next activity is an activity that the children really like. You have a box of beans and you have a magic number chart where they record an answer to. The child puts his hand into the bean box, pulls out a handful of beans, places it next to him and start counting. The child then divides the beans into groups of 10 with a remainder. I like this activity because it enables learners to interact once again and also it enables learners to take a large random number and break it down into tens and units and this is exactly what I want them to understand I want them to grasp the concept of tens and units you are going to use unifix blocks to build the first letter of your name so what is the first letter of your name oh. so your name is Oratile so you're going to have to make a plan to build an R with these unifix blocks. The learners take unifix blocks and they build the first letter of their name. Now they have to count the blocks and they have to record it on their whiteboard. This now enables them to sort the numbers into tens and units. The games that I've set out for the learners all interlink. Learners learn differently with different kinds of apparatus. So sometimes learners would prefer to write something or sometimes learners would prefer to count something with apparatus. 
that the exercise that we've done in the government book on page 112 and 113 and 14, they have to break up a number into tens and units. The logical learner prefers this activity more because he doesn't have to interact with his peers. You need to throw the dice twice for you to add up two numbers. Okay, so throw the dice once, each one of you. Throw the dice. Three and you. Six. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you throw another three? Okay. Okay, so what is three plus three? Six, well done. But what, what number did you throw? Throw again? Throw again? Four. Well, well done. Here's your other one. Put them on. One, two, three, four. How, how much is six plus four? Well done. Pop up? Good. For learners that need more reinforcements, I'll take to the carpet and work individually and give them individual attention to make sure that they do understand the concept. Of 10 do you have? One group of 10, well done. Do you have any units? Do you have any other units there? No, very good. Your turn. Do you have a group of 10? No. How many units do you have? Three. Let's count them. One. I like this way of teaching because there's something for every kind of learner.